Are we recording? We gonna talk about some art. We gonna talk about some art. Everybody we get started. I'm getting really good at this lemon drop situation. It's my favorite drink. I don't really wanna go to the bar right now. So I have learned how to make a lemon drop. Wow, wow, wow. That's good. <laughs> I'm Waco Boafo was literally the talk of artists, dealers, advisors, the fashion industry, collectors, and especially these dirty ass, crazy ass flippers. And the biggest question was, how in the absolute hell did he become so big so fast? And how in the hell were people able to sell works they bought for $10,000 for hundreds of thousands of dollars? Let's do an artist market dive on I'm Waco Boafo. What's up guys, I'm Mariah Elise, this is Frame, and as you know, I talk to you guys about the art market, art culture, and I give my perspective on this art world, with hopes that you don't have to go through everything I had to go through to learn just a little bit about the art world. If you're into that, make sure you click that subscribe button below, do your thing in the comments, and click the like button, it's a huge help, even if you don't think so. Before we really, really begin, let me give you some advice. Not that you asked for it, but let me go ahead and give it to you. Artists. If you want to know how to have a sustainable career as an artist, study the career of other artists you align with. Collectors, of course you know my vibes, have integrity about your collection, while being financially smart. I say it every video if I have to, but also study who the curators are, the galleries are, pay attention to who they're bringing in, who they're mentioning in different articles together. To both of y'all. <laughs> if you want your collection or your art career to be successful, the answer is, is to make sure you find genuine interest in the arts. This is not the stock market. It's not that type of a game. Well, it kinda is, but it's not. Yes, yeah, filled with the dirtiest of dirtiest of games, but it's also filled with some of the most beautiful people I've ever met in my entire life. Treat them right, because you're about to listen to how this guy kinda got treated wrong by just a few people. I'm not gonna say really any names in this video because it's really all he say, she say. But do know this, we all need to practice maintaining and building integral relationships with one another. Know that if we work together, I'm gonna try my absolute best to do good business and let my reputation precede me. These artists are creating works that document my history, our history. More than anything, I give a damn about protecting that. Because I absolutely need the idea of my black skin to be represented and documented when I'm long gone. I need our images to be preserved. And that's what it's really all about. Now let's get to it. Listen to this. A couple of months ago, I read an article that said two years ago, Amawako was struggling to sell pieces for $100 to friends in Ghana. And that's crazy because the last time I checked the secondary market, his latest piece to sell realized at $756,000 on December 7, 2020. Look, I don't know why I'm just talking about it here, but this is scary. In the last video, we talked about Jordan Castile. Her career was way different. It happened fast for sis, but for him, it was really out of line how fast it happened. If you wanna check out that video, hit the link above in the video and then come back here. But let me tell you the crazy part. That's not even his most expensive to sell on the secondary market in the last month. But his piece, Baba Diop, which was painted in 2019, sold for $1,146,823 on December 2nd, 2020 at Christie's 20th Century Hong Kong to New York action. Let's not miss the elephant in the room. Every region has started buying up and flipping African art lately. If you're paying attention, that's not a secret. But now that we have briefly spoken about how Boafo is is performing on the market let's talk about how he got there the crazy shit that happened along the way and how his career is being protected and what can be done to continue to protect the sustainability of his career all right cool so you remember i said in 2019 those works went for all of this money on the secondary market keep that in mind now pay attention to these years in 2018 stuff for him really started to change kahinde wally stumbled across his instagram page and took notice he let a few friends in the states know about this artist that he found including the roberts project who took a liking to him. Kehinde let them know that he was personally collecting Boafo and that they should take a look at him. Of course, I don't know the ins and outs of what actually happened, but what I can tell you is it was pretty damn fast that he ended up having a big exhibition with the Roberts Project. Now, I hope you guys remember those numbers we spoke about a little bit earlier. It's important to know that we're talking about the year of 2018 right now. And this particular exhibition with the Roberts Project was, were priced at about $10,000, 2018. $10,000. Now you know that created a buzz that they all sold out by the second day of the show. This guy from Ghana comes to America 
and a, a fairly unknown artist at the Roberts Project and all of his work sells out in two days, that's real buzzy. And it got really crazy when they took his pieces to freeze. I want you to remember then and still, we are in a time where black figurative works are in high demand. But if you pay attention to his work, it's not just from picture to canvas paintings. These artists that are in high demand need to be very specific. Most of them are very textured in their works. Now back to Boafo, things really started going for him. His work started being consigned to notable exhibitions curated by notable artists like Nina Chanel Abbey. Notable collectors start really getting their hands on his work. It was fast and it was crazy. He started getting notable residencies. People were fighting over who built his career. But as I was watching it on the sidelines, it seemed to be happening way too fast. Now, of course, when he went to Basel, it went crazy. And by this time, all of the collectors started having their hands on his work. Now y'all know what we all watched. If you didn't watch it last year, then you're getting a little glimpse of it here. I'm kind of speeding through how his career progressed so the video isn't too long. But in early 2020, he started being included in auctions. This only means one thing. I haven't mentioned that one year before 2017. If I haven't mentioned anything before 2017, and I said in 2020, he started being included in auctions, we already know some of the wrong people got their hands on his work. They were not looking to hold his work. They were not looking to engage with his work and love his work. They were looking to flip his work. These people held his pieces for months, moving off of how high in demand his pieces were. And they were flipping the absolute hell out of them on the auction market. In particular, it was a painting titled The Lemon Bathing Suit, which was painted in 2019. So the paintings aren't even a year old that went to Phillips Auction for a low to high estimate of 40 to 65 grand. But check out how much it was sold for, $880,000. Let me be more specific. Someone bought this painting from someone else for $22,500. Then they decided, I'm gonna bring it to auction. The auction estimated in between 40 and $65,000 but all the whispers were, it's gonna sell for a lot higher than that. A few other people got those whispers too. Some of you guys may be thinking, okay, okay, what's the problem for someone profiting off of this artwork? Well, the artist number one doesn't get paid for that. And the primary market doesn't always match the secondary market. It screws up the balance of the primary and the secondary market when you have a new artist selling pieces for $10,000 they resell for $22,500 and then it goes to auction for an estimate of between $45,000 and $60,000 and then it sells for hundreds of thousands of dollars. There is no balance between the primary and the secondary market. How do you, how do you really as a, as an artist, how do you justify, you're confused at how much to sell your work for. The market isn't, it needs a balance. It needs a balance. So when these flippers do that, they overvalue the work, right? That piece sold for $880,000. That's crazy that the artist doesn't get a kickback from that. That's crazy that the person who made that amount of money wouldn't give Boaco a percentage of that. Pay it forward, patronize the artist. Anyway, the artist doesn't get paid for it. And the primary market, and the problem is the primary market doesn't always match the secondary market. The galleries and affairs, etc. they have decisions to make. Do they significantly raise the prices of Boafo's work? Or do they keep it chill and continue raising the prices slowly? Because what happens when Boafo starts to stop selling at auction for that much? I'm not saying that's what happens. I'm talking about artists in general. If that happens, how do you keep that balance? Anyway, the question is, who even paid that much for an artist that new? Let me tell you something really quick. <laughs> I'm gonna twist it up for you real quick. Just don't twist it up. Boafo got news that a few collectors were trying to flip it. So he got in on it. A real estate guru that was bidding on behalf of his client, who happened to be a Mawako Boafo, is the person who bought the damn painting. You wanna talk about how his career is being protected? He thought he was protecting it right then and there. When he started to see his flippers flipping his work so quickly, he thought it would flex on him. And he thought he would buy it himself in conjunction with the real estate guru. But Wapo really couldn't afford that at the time. So they had an agreement that, okay, cool. If y'all buy it for whatever the price you guys buy it for, they bought it. Then he gave them $480,000 worth of paintings. Crazy thing is these gurus flipped those pieces and they made a 644,000 profit on the three pieces that Boafo gave them. It didn't stop there. So many people started to flip his work 
most of his pieces were selling for significantly more than a high estimate at auction. I mean, for a lot of people, it would be hard to see yourself buying a $10,000 piece. And then you look at the auction market and you're like, okay, I bought this because I loved it but people are really selling these pieces for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Boafo has come to auction 22 times since the lemon bathing suit. Of the 23 works offered, 13 sold for prices exceeding $80,000, with six exceeding $200,000, which is a remarkable run for an artist new to auction, especially with the economy being like this. Privately, they've been selling exceeding $200,000. Some of these collectors, we could say they don't have integrity, but again, what would you do if you bought a piece for $10,000 and you look up and now it's worth $100,000? I think the advisors and the dealers and the collectors, they were just making decisions and trying to do their job. Boafo just needed some strong protection on the primary market. He needs somebody to really, really have his back and protect his primary market because you damn near can't control the secondary market. You can control the primary one. He needs to be signed with someone that collectors are low-key nervous to piss off. The collectors could have went slow with him. He's gonna grow. He's gonna be protected. He is still highly regarded. He is still considered one of the artists that's gonna continue to maintain cultural value, to maintain monetary value. They didn't have to start flipping his work like that so fast, but they did. And I can't say that it didn't help his career, but I also can't say that it didn't hurt his career. I think it's important that the advisors protect the artists, that the collectors protect the artists, that the artists protect themselves, that the galleries protect the artists. But at the end of the day, look at what we're talking about. It all turns into a business. It's still a market and that's what I, I need a lot of people to honestly realize. I know we covered a lot in a short period of time, but I'm happy to see what Boafo is doing now with his collaborations with Dior. I'm a really big fan of Dior. And I love to see that it's re being re see that it's being reimagined with the photographs. You can, guys can go to his Instagram and check it out. So keep up with this guy, see what he's doing. Keep up with the collectors that's collecting him. Collectors, if you're gonna collect, collect with your heart. Collect also with your mind, but have some integrity. The next video, I'm gonna really get back into my Acorns account that I'm currently using to save with you guys to buy our first art piece together. I'll let you guys know what I'm buying. I'll see you guys then. Make sure you guys are safe in these streets. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on, we all know that. I love you guys, be safe.